ever since the Atem Mini Pro, Pro ISO, Extreme, and Extreme ISO have come out, it has made live streaming your church services very simple and very budget friendly. And to be quite honest, I actually recommend these in all of my current installs that I do for ministries. In this video, I wanna walk through a complete guide of showing you how to use the ATEM to completely handle your live streaming, going over main points of how to handle your audio, the video streaming, and all the workflow that using solely the ATEM for your live streaming will be used for your service. So let's go. Hey folks, AJ the CEO here. It's your first time stopping by the channel. Thanks for stopping by and on this channel, we focus on tips, training, strategies, reviews, and bills to help modernize your media ministry. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. And if you like what we're doing here, consider becoming a patron or a YouTube member by clicking one of the links down below. So the A10 Mini Extreme, man, it has just changed so much stuff. But before I even get into that, there are going to be timestamps to every single section that we go over so that you can quickly jump to it. And I hope for this to be a reference guide that if you have any questions, you can always keep coming back to um, to answer your questions or forward this on to new volunteers or recommend and share this video with other ministries. Please leave comments down below if there's anything else that you would like me to add to this as a follow up that you're running across. And because, hey, these videos are meant to be a resource to help out your media ministry. All right, so let's go ahead and cut over down to the overhead so we can just check out the ATEM in general and let's go over the basics. All righty, so we have our ATEM here freshly, <laughs> fresh in the box. And this is actually gonna be for a ministry that I'm gonna be installing later this week. So this is gonna be a complete guide that hopefully will help them out as well too. So. When you get your ATEM, of course, you're going to get the actual device itself. Let's move this out of the way here. And you're going to get your power cable. Now, you do have, it comes with international plugs and adapters, but obviously, I'm not this install is here in the United States, so this is what we're using. But the other ones are in the box if needed. Now, the mindset of how I do all of my stuff, I like to segment everything, meaning that the video switcher handles the video. Can it handle audio? Yes, but I do not do that. Um, that's just me. And then you also have your sound whether it be the house sound or whatever, I let the mixer handle that. I don't mix the two. So that way, if you have an issue with sound, you know it is with the mixer. It is not with the ATEM. Or if it is with the ATEM, it's like a one-button press of just turning everything on. But we're going to talk through all of that as well. And then you have your cameras. So, But we're going to cover all of that stuff later. So let's go ahead and hook everything up. And the main thing is if you look over here, we spin it around. Now, I am using the ATEM Mini Extreme. Again, note this is for the ATEM Mini Pro and higher. So, because those ones have the ability to live stream, the ATEM Mini, the base one, does not. All right, so with this one, we have our power, we have our Ethernet, we have two USB that one is gonna be used for connection to your computer, Windows, um, Linux, Mac, whichever one you want. A second one can go to another computer or to a hard drive. That is what I'm gonna use with mine. Then we have two HDMI outs. One of them is gonna be used as a multi-view, so you can see all of the inputs that are coming in. And then you have the other one that will be an output that you want to say go to um, overflow or monitors inside of the sanctuary, right? Then we have our eight inputs. We have two 3.5 millimeter inputs for your audio. And then you have a headphone jack, right? So let's go ahead and plug up some stuff and we'll come back. All right, so we have everything set up here. Um, as you can see, I have one camera plugged in. I have my Sony um, camera plugged in. 
and we have our output that you'll see on the monitor here, which is our multi view. Now, this has not been set up in any type of way, so we need to go through and configure all of that. But let's just go over the basics. Like I said, I have one camera plugged in, I have the output going in, I have a USB going out so that the computer can detect it and control it. Um, and then we have the HDMI, uh, I mean HDMI, <laughs> Ethernet going out connecting. Now, again, there is no Wi-Fi built into this. When you come into stuff like this, especially in general, live streaming hardwired is always better than Wi-Fi. It gives you a stable, faster connection in comparison. And then with the ATEM line, you have to have an Ethernet connection. So worst case scenario, you need to have a line run there, have somebody put a jack in there, whatever in your media booth, but you, it is highly recommended that you use Ethernet, all right? All right, so now when it comes to your audio, you have a couple of options here. Now, I'm gonna be using the X32 rack mount, but it doesn't really matter because almost every single um, sound system that you have is gonna be one of these three options. So again, remember, when it comes to the ATEM, you need a 3.5 millimeter. That's like a regular stereo headset that you would get. So um, the ending would be something like this. This is a 3.5 millimeter, and this is what you're gonna use to connect. But there are only a few options that your mixer will use to connect out. So if we look over here, you have a female XLR connection right here that will turn into that same 3.5 millimeter. I have a long cable here. So it's gonna turn into that. That's one of your options. That's the one actually I'm going to be using. You also have a dual quarter inch that turns into a 3.5 millimeter. Something like that. Or a real easy and cheap one as well, if the board supports it, you have RCA out into a 3.5. Any one of these will work. Personally, I like to go with the XLR to 3.5 because in practice it's actually produced less noise. You could get a hum eliminator, but when I've been using it like this, I haven't had that much um, noise or whatever coming through it. So that's what, we, that's what we're gonna use. So let me go ahead and hook this up and then we'll go from there. All right, real simple. We're just gonna plug it into, I'm gonna use mic jack number one. And there you go. As you can see here on the screen, we're actually getting readings, but there's some things we need to adjust for that first, all right? So let's go ahead and cut back over to the computer, and then we're gonna go over some of the software. All right, so now we're on the computer that the ATEM is connected to over USB. The first thing we need to do is head over to blackmagicdesign.com. We're gonna go up here to setup, we're gonna click on ATEM production switchers, scroll down and download the latest version for Mac or Windows. Now this software is not compatible with Linux. I think there's a workaround, but we're not gonna cover that in this video. Um, you click on that and you don't have to register if you don't want to, just go ahead and click download only. And that is it. So now I already have this on my system. So let's go ahead and open that up. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our setup, ATEM setup application. And let's go ahead and click. As you can see, I am connected over network and USB. So that's a good thing. So for both those icons, let's go ahead and click this little um, save file thing. Now. With USB, that is the only way you can make some of these adjustments. That's the reason why I'm on this system right now that's connected over USB. In here, you can set the IP address to DHCP so it just grabs it automatically from your router, or you can give it a static one, um, whichever one is your preference. Typically, I like to have mine on a static IP address. There's no real difference, I just do that. <laughs> um, you also have an option that as a failover, you could always connect your phone if your phone has a tethering option. Um, 
you can connect it over to that other USB jack and you can actually stream off of your phone if your phone's upload speed can support it. So you can give a priority. Which one do you want to take precedence? Do you want the ethernet or your mobile device? It all depends. I keep mine in a stationary position. Um, so if ethernet ever went out, it will roll over to your mobile if you have it connected, but we'll just select ethernet. Now, some other options you have are program preview or cut bus. The difference between these is with a program and preview, you're going to have a step to prepare before you go to something. So you'll have what everybody else in the audience is seeing, and then you can queue up your next input on the ATEM before it immediately goes. Cut bus means if you pick one of the inputs, it just immediately goes. All right. That is your choice. I personally like program and preview, and that's how I'm going to have it set up. Drop with transition, stay with transitions. This is when you turn on picture in picture. Do you want it to always stay on or does it go away once you change to a new input? I like to have it drop, but again, that is your preference. Chroma key, the exact same thing. Do you want it to stay on? Chroma key is the, like the green screen if you want to erase it. Do you want it to stay in place or do you want it to go away when you change shots? That is up to you. And then the very last setting is the brightness of the buttons. So if we crank this down, you can see the brightness goes down or you can crank it up. It is your preference. All right. Let's go ahead and save that. And then we can click this other button here to open up the control software, or you can go directly to the control software that was installed as well. So let's open that up. And all right, we are now on the software. Now let's make some changes. Again, we connected our sound system. If you are connecting a anything other than a direct mic, kind of like the mic that I have right now, when I connect this to my ATEM, I is, is going directly there. If you're using a mixer, what you need to do is come down here to this corner here, click this little gear, and we're going to go over to audio general, and we want to change our input to the appropriate one. So for right here, this is actually going to be a line in because that's coming from our mixer. And if you look at the bars, they just dropped because a mic is way more sensitive than a mixer. And that all that green that you see, that is a whole bunch of noise that you don't that you're going to have in the line. So if you're hooking up a mixer, make sure you always come in here and change it to line. The only time it should be a microphone is if you're connecting a microphone like this or a handheld one directly to your ATEM. All right. So now that we got this, let's go ahead and go back to general. And this is where you can set your frame rate. The ATEM always outputs at 1920 by 1080. It always does that. But you have a frame rate that you can change. And some TVs, depending on what you're connecting this to, may or may not support certain ones. So by default, it's set to auto and if all the TVs are exactly the same, this is fine. Even though me personally, I like to set mine at the highest at 1080p 60. So that's 60 frames a second. That's um, 60 images every second. That's going to be, and it makes the, the motion flow a little bit better. But some people might want to, if you're in, um, if you're doing professional broadcast stuff, you can actually do 59.94. Um, if you're like in different territories that support it, you can use 50, 30, 29, 97. That's another broadcast um, frame rate. And then 25, 24, that's more like that cinematic feel. I personally like to go for 60, but that is where you change it. Now, that is only for the output that's going to the TVs, your live stream, whatever. That's what that setting is for. The ATEM um, line has a converter on every single input, meaning that right now the camera I'm using is a 4k camera that's connected to my ATEM, but it scales it down to 1080p 60, the frame rate I'm using the other cameras I'm using are 1080p. So you can mix and match. So you don't have to worry about setting your camera to anything. The ATEM will handle that. All right. Now let's go over to the multi view and I'm going to bring up this at the same time so we can go over both of these. So here is my setup with the screen that you see with my multi view. 
And we want to adjust this. You adjust this based off of how many cameras that you're using and just the flow of what you're doing. If we went to the default, it looks something like this. That might be busy for some other people. And in any way, you can click these and change these around to suit your needs any way you want to. All right. But for right now, what I'm going to do is that this is a real simple install and how it's going to be used. So I'm going to have the program and preview that we did in the other step be the predominant options here. So in the top left, that is preview. That is what's getting ready to be switched to program is what's going out on to your live stream or for your screens right now that will change though but that's how we have it set up and you just pick the drop downs and you can make anything that you want so i'm gonna make this camera one two i'll do three four and i like to have my streaming status on here my recording status and then my audio status on the bottom and then maybe give myself one more for the media player and that is my setup for this, which will work very well, which is the same type of layout that I'm using. We're only hooking one camera up and then we are going to have a computer plug in for like scripture and lyrics and graphics and stuff like that. All right. Now, under labels, this is where you can give all of the names on your multi view a different name. So for me, I'll have this. This will be called our back PTZ. That's what's going to be connected. And I give it, you have four letters that you can use for a label, make it short. So I just do BPTZ. Then this one will be computer PC. And then the other ones I'm not using. So it doesn't really matter right now. Now you could change the output ones. Honestly, I recommend you don't change those. And then media, again, you could change them. Not a big deal, um, but you can change them if you want to. All right. Hyperdeck. If you had one, like I'm using a hyperdeck right now, you can connect this and then you can control it over your network, but we're not going to talk about that. Let me know down below if you want me to go over that. All right. Remote. We're not really, that functionality is not with the ATEM, so we can ignore that. Boom. All right. So now we have the basic setup. Now, the next thing we want to do is, and oh, you know what? I didn't hit save on the labels. So let's go back here and let's change this again. Back PTZ, BPTZ, computer, PC, save. So now, as you can see, the labels have taken place up here. Now let's just go back and verify all our audio is the same. Yep. Now, in this setup, if this is the only thing that you have going on, another option you have, if you don't want to have all these buttons available, you can go here to File and Preference. And these are those same settings that were in the setup that we did before. But let's go over here to Mappings. And this is where you can turn this stuff off. If you don't want anybody to see those buttons, you can turn these off. So now they only have access to the ones, if they're using the software, that's all you're going to use. But obviously you can't turn that stuff off on the ATEM. That just makes it, if you want to make it less complex, but again, that is your preference. So like right now, the only buttons available are the back camera and the PTZ. I mean, in the PC, but that's where you can change them. File, preferences, and all this. Now, if you're using black magic cameras, you also have an option that you can select the type of camera that it is. But right now, all of these are generic. So let's go ahead and reset these to the defaults. We have all our buttons back. Now, the very next thing that I like to use is, even if you don't use it, is to get your stuff prepped for if you were gonna do lower thirds and video over, I mean, text over live video, which we have a video that talks about that in a deep dive, but this is exactly what we're gonna do. We're going to use our PC to layer graphics over top of our camera or any input that we do. So we're going to come up here to palettes and we're going to go to downstream key. And this is downstream key number one. So what we're going to say is use our fill and key source is going to be our computer. So now when we send stuff, 
and we want to layer graphics and everything that are formatted appropriately on our PC input, we just got to press auto and that's it. And that's how stuff will fade in. All right. And let's see what else. Now we also have our output here. And again, this is meant for live streaming. So we're going to come here to our live stream option and then figure out whatever, whatever, um, platform that you're going to be streaming to if you want to do more and you are it's not in this list i have this video here that you can watch that will show you how to add more to this but right now in our recent 871 update they've added a bunch of these so for the most part the most um most commonly used ones are already here so say i want to do youtube i would just pick youtube and then pick whatever, get the streaming key for the platform that you're streaming to, and you just paste it in here. So I'm just going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. Even though that's not a key, but we'll just put that there. All right. So now with all of these settings done and we got everything set up the way we want to, we're going to come over here to actually, let me correct myself. Let's go to one more thing. We have outputs right now. Output number one, which we don't have anything plugged into, that is the program out. That is going to show whatever shows up on our input. That is what's going to be there. So right now you would see I have my camera. So program is what's going to go out. That HDMI, if we hook that up to a TV in the front of the sanctuary, a splitter that goes to multiple TVs, that is what's going to show up. You can always change this at any point in time. And we've talked about that in another video that I will tag up here. So say you have all this input, but you only want the computer to always show in the sanctuary. We can make that change here. Um, really simple to do. Output number two is our multi view. So that's where you can change that. But now that we have everything set the way we want to, we're going to come up here to file. And then we're going to come to save startup state. So that means everything that we just said that we set when we turn the ATEM off and turn it right back on, everything is going to be exact same. So if we come up here and turn this off, all right, we lost connection. Let's turn it right back on. As you see, our, our streaming key is exactly the same. All of our labels are exactly the same. Our palettes and downstream key is set exactly the same. That is the easy way that you don't have to worry about overriding or somebody accidentally changing anything. The only way this will change is if somebody makes a change and goes to file and save startup state again. Shouldn't be an issue, but for safety, you always could after you set up everything as well, go to file, do a save as, and then name whatever that you want it to. And I'll just change it to the backup. I'll say, this is my um, ATEM defaults. And it will save every single setting. That worst case scenario, you can just open it just like a document and restore everything back to how you want it. All right. So now that we got that, we don't have to worry about setting this up again every Sunday or Saturday, whatever day you're having your service, it's there. Now, let's go over here to our audio. Now, right now, and I made a mistake on here. Right now, we're only using one input. So let's go ahead and turn the audio for input number two off. We're only using input number one. So let's go back here one more time. And let's save our startup state and let's turn it off and turn it back on again. And let's make sure that only the line, the mic one is on. And there you go. Now the mic is always there. At this point, there's really nothing that needs to be touched. So I have a mic that's already connected here. Let's see if I can reach over here and see what type of readings that we get on our mic number one. All right. So as you can see, I am tapping on the mic here and I don't have this one configured, but you can see 
audio is coming here. And this is something that you would adjust in the mixer. I don't like really adjusting anything unless the overall volume is not loud enough. You don't want to get too loud, but we could crank this up on the master of what's going out. And as you can see, there we go. So if you have any of your instruments, your keyboard, your organ, your drums, your singers, the pulpit, anything that's running through your mixer is going to be sent over that single cable to the ATEM. That's all you got to do. And that's how you make all the controls there. Now, if you want to have something, a separate mix for your live stream, then the house, I have a video that goes over that as well, too. Um, it is for the X32, but the concepts are exactly the same with any other board that supports auxiliary outputs. All right. So at this point, we got everything that we need for if we want to live stream in any way, shape or form from our input. Now, let me go ahead and grab my laptop and we're going to hook this up for a second input and we're going to go over the basics of the having scripture and lyrics coming in based off of everything that we've already set up. All right, folks. So at this point, I have added a few things. I have my laptop here that is connected to input number two, as you can see up there. I've also added a SSD drive to the secondary USB output so that it can record. And you can tell it's ready to record because you can see the green light right there. That means that is compatible. If it's not showing up, either the drive is not fast enough or um, it just needs to be formatted. You need to format it in X fat, E X um, fat. So for it to work, that is the file format way that you need to file um, format these drives for it to work. All right. So now I am on my laptop here and what I'm going to do is cut over to this other shot so you can see. So as you can see right now, my laptop is set to do, um, Duplicate. I don't want that. I want to be able to output this as a secondary screen. So let me change this real quick so that y'all can see this. This is the same settings that we talked about before. I'm going to change the I'm going to change the output right now just so we can see what I'm doing. All right. I just changed it right there. All right, so we're back here. So what we're going to do is Mac does the exact same thing, but for Windows, you can hit the Windows key and the letter P. And now I want to change this to, instead of duplicate, I want to do to extend. So now that screen is completely clear and it's going to be used as my output um, for any types of software that I want to use. I am going to be using Presenter, but any... Um, any presentation software will work. So as of right now, you're gonna see that screen just went blank because I this is the ATEM is looking at input number two. All right. So if I just happen to bring up a slide here, see now that's what's being displayed as an input now because if I switched over to input number one here on the ATEM and you'll see these change if I switch over to this by hitting auto now that's what's showing up all right that would be what somebody is seeing inside the sanctuary or on the live stream all right really really easy now I have other videos that show a deep dive of all of this so that's not what this video is for but this is just to give you a high level there is a breakdown of all this other stuff now, the main thing we have to do now is how are we going to actually run our services? Um, when we did stuff with our ATEM, I mean, with OBS, we had a way to have different flows of everything going back and forth. Now, you could do that. I had a video that I just recently did of showing how to loop in OBS. If you want to do that, play videos and all this other stuff easily. But we're going to leverage a few things to make this work. All right, so if we go over here to our audio tab and I'm going to change my audio on my laptop. Now, again, what I would do 
if you're playing any type of audio coming from your system that's running um, your presentation software, again, remember the mindset of having everything separate. Can I run audio from the ATEM? I mean, from my laptop directly to the ATEM over HDMI? Yes, I can, but I don't want to. Because if we do play any audio from the laptop, the only people who are going to be able to hear it are the people on the live stream or if you have um, the ATEM connected to a television and you have the volume turned up. Don't want to do that, especially if you have a sound system. The easiest way, since we're already connected to our mixer, just get another cable from your laptop or your computer because there's a, a speaker out. Run a cable from that into your sound system. That way, when something is played on the computer, it's played for the house, and automatically, whatever is going to the house is going to the ATEM anyway. That's why I like to have everything separated. The mixer handles all audio, so any audio needs to be played needs to be connected to that. But with that being said, there's a bunch of ways that you could do this. So for me, let's go ahead and I'm going to set up um, two ways. Let's go look at over here on our ATEM. We have this thing called a media pool here. This is only for static images. All right. So you could go to a place like CMG Create. And they offer some free images. And I'm just going to download a couple of these ones here. So we have a welcome. Thanks for joining us announcements and let's see is there another one that we can use here Marsha I'm gonna use I'm gonna use these because I like those so let's go ahead and download this one thanks for joining us and announcements just to give you a sample. Um, I wish there was another thanks for watching one to where we want to end our stuff, but hopefully you get an idea of how this will work. All right. So I'm going to take these images and all I'm going to do is just drag and drop them into the media pool. Like that. All right. So right now, let me close this. We have this stuff loaded. So the workflow for our service is play some free music. And actually, let's mention that right now. When you're live streaming, you cannot, you cannot play any music that goes to your live stream that you do not have a license for. Exp I, um, explicit permissions from the um, person who wrote the song or um, if you go and try and buy something from iTunes, Google Play, whatever, a CD that you got, you can't play that stuff. You, you, you just can't. That's against, um, that's a copyright infringement. Um, so what I like to do, you have a couple of options. You can go to something like Epidemic Sound. This is what I use for my channel. Um, I have a link down below. Um, they will give you a discount on there. Um, and it gives me a little kickback, but it's no extra out of your pocket. Um, but that gives you royalty-free music that it has a wide selection of music that you can use and play in any way, shape, or form. Um, you also could go to audiojungle.net. And you can actually buy a song here and then you'll have a license for that song. So if I wanted to come in here and say um, intro music. There's a bunch of songs that you can pick, pick whichever one that you want that suits your ministry and you can buy one and you can get ones as low as five dollars or all the way up to fifty five and more if you really wanted to. But you don't have to. You can get something and then you'll have a license for it. And then that will be your intro. That is what I'm going to use in my setup. So I'm going to play audio through my mixer. What's going to happen is let's go back to our ATEM here. 
And that is going to show up as our media player. So that's media player number one. And if you ever want to change those images, we'll come over here to media player and honestly change the names of them. So it's really easy for you to tell what they are. Because if you go to media player, you see they have the names in here. I would have probably get rid of rustic brush and rename them. But there you go. Welcome. Thanks announcement. So you'll know which one is which. So MP1 is looking at the welcome. And here is MP1. So if I cut over to that in the ATEM software, that is now what you see here on the screen that will be showing out to anybody or that's what will be showing up on the live stream. All right. So actually, yeah, let me actually bring up and simulate what the live stream would be seeing. So hopefully that makes sense for you. If I get my mic out the way, see, it looks like they're playing the exact same thing, but they're not. So let's go here now and let's switch back to our output as a multi view. So right here is what everyone would see. And you see the program is in here, but then also the other screen is showing exactly what the live stream would see. So right now, if we were playing this, this is what everybody would be seeing. And for my flow, we're now going to play some music. And let's go over here to audio tab so you can see what's going on. Again, look for the mic one, and that's what's actually going to be played. All right, so we're playing some music, but we need to turn up our input. So if I, as you can see, now the bars are moving. So now that music is going out to the live stream, if you can hear that. So my workflow is we're playing music that we have a license for. Everybody else on the live stream is seeing welcome. You could also add a countdown. I've done videos on how to do that. Really simple to do. But we got that plan. Everybody now sees a message that's coming on. They're hearing music. And then preferably add another countdown so people know when your live stream is going to go. That is the flow. Now, in the same setup, if you were playing system, your audio, this music through the house, they would be hearing that too. That is your choice to turn that off or not. Not going to go into that. But right now, you're giving an auditory um, message for whoever's watching. They're hearing something. You have some content showing. And that's it. Now, when you're ready... When the service is ready, you got everything here. You're going to queue up to go to your camera and then you just hit this auto or cut, whichever one I like auto. It just gives a nicer way to fade in and then we'll fade in. And then as you can see, now we're on our service on how everything would be going. All right. Really, really interesting and really smooth on how it would go. Now, when you, if you're playing music, make sure you stop the music. <laughs> on your um that whole music that's looping before you go into service or that's going to be drowning out and that's what everybody's going to be hearing now in this same setup once we start talking on the mics and let's switch back over here again if i was talking in the mic this is what everybody would be hearing anything if your instruments were plugged in all that other good stuff that's how that would work so let's do that again because I realized I did not record <laughs> from the other ATEM. So we're going to switch back to our media. Everybody's saying welcome. We're going to go ahead and play that music again. That's what everybody's going to be hearing. And then when you're ready, we're going to fade over into the service. I'm actually going to end the music early so that we can do this. So this is done. Boom. We're going to fade over. And now this is what you're hearing. This is a recording coming directly from the ATEM. Obviously, I wouldn't be leaning in like this, but <laughs> hopefully you get an idea of how this would be working. And then if you had multiple cameras, this is how it would loop back and forth. You pick whatever. So say right now, I want to come over and add audio into this, right? Oh, excuse me. I want to bring up scripture. This is where I'm bringing up my 
presentation software. I have Romans 1, I mean Romans 6, 1 through 10 coming in. I go ahead and pick input number 2. And then y'all are going to see the scripture. So if I want to bring in my lower thirds on top of this, because we set up the DSK, I hit the DSK button. And boom, there you go. That's what you can see now. Might want to play with the shadows a little bit, but you'll dial that in and that's how you can um, see anything. You could put a bar down here that will cover that. You can choose to show the um, translation if you want to, but that's the flow. And then when you're done, you can just turn that off and then you can cut back. Now, with your presentation software, you could load videos that way and play them through the ATEM. The ATEM natively itself can't play videos. That's why we loaded still images. But say you want to do this intro and I have my audio being routed into the system and we're going to just play the video for intro. So I go ahead and cue that up and then we switch over. Now this is what people would be hearing for your live stream and then when you're done you would switch back over and there you go. So you could have static images just copied over that you can download for free or you can um, use a pre-made video. I have ones that you can get from my website ajtheceo.com. You can get one um, that you can just load into your presentation software. We got a um, starting soon, a five minute one. We also have a thank you for watching at the end. Graphics, still images that you can use for online giving. And you would just load that either in the ATEM if it's a still image or preferably. Again, remember how we segment everything. Do everything inside of your presentation because your presentation system is what presents anything to the people who are watching. Now that all of that is done, that is the flow. The only thing else we would do is just maybe have that thanks for watching, thanks for joining us image that you can load into your presentation software or directly into the ATEM, and then you cut out into that, and then you're finished the service. Now, depending on where you're streaming to, I just kind of recommend you doing this anyway. Just go ahead and leave that last image up for at least 20 to 30 seconds. That allows you to put a card at the end of YouTube if you're streaming there for further videos for people to watch or a subscribe button. And then it doesn't hurt to have that if you're streaming to Facebook. But you just want to present that information to whoever's watching more about your ministry, how to ways to give, website, whatever information. Just leave it up for 30 seconds, then kill the live stream. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link this to a stream that I did with this entire setup so you can see a quick version of how this will work and the whole workflow that I use with the ATEM. And again, I hope this helps get you jump started or as a refresher on how this will work. Please let me know down below if there's anything else that you would like me to go over to help out. That's what this channel is for. And that's what I'm here for to help modernize your media ministry and give you the training tips and tools that will help you reach out and share the message with more people, not just the people in your congregation that are staying at home, but the world at large. So if you like this type of content, appreciate the like, consider subscribing, hit that bell. That way you get notified when we come out with other videos to help modernize your media ministry. Thanks for watching, folks. This is AJ. We'll catch you on the next video later.